Uh, visual descriptions. This is probably going to be the longest part of the presentation because there's the most to say about these. You have probably seen these about on the internet at some point. Visual descriptions. There are three main types. Image descriptions, video descriptions, and alt text. The image description is the most detailed version. It's an explanation of what the image has, the content of the image that provides textual access to visual content. This is different from a photo caption, like if you said, me and my friend socks, photo credit my friend Tiffany. That's a caption, that's not an image description. Image descriptions are generally used for photos, art, logos, graphs and charts, and maps. Uh, you don't need image descriptions for anything that's just decorative for aesthetic or visual appeal. You just want it for things where your audience needs to receive the visual information via text. Video descriptions are a friend of image descriptions. They're kind of the same thing, but a little smaller because you can't get as detailed without becoming a small novel. So it's just a written description of the most important visual information that takes place across the duration of a video. You want to do the broad beats here. Uh, the alt text is a companion to the image description, but it is a separate thing. Alt text is a hidden, brief, textual explanation of an image used in the coding of digital graphics online and in digital files. Why do we need these things? Blind and low vision audiences need visual descriptions. They use screen readers to access visual content, and screen readers can only read words. So that is how they know what your images are. Also, Autistic and dyslexic audiences with visual processing differences might benefit from having the option to read about an image and have it explained. People with sensory processing disorders and learning disabilities might benefit from not having to use their eyes on certain images and instead have a visual description. Also, people with limited technology or low tech setups, they might not be able to load your image. They might have an issue where their technology just simply isn't able to process the file. And if an image fails to load, the alt text you've included will appear in its place and allow them to know what it is you were trying to convey. Image descriptions provide context for people that they might not be able to perceive otherwise. So you can use your image description to say, hey, we were at the beach for my birthday party, as opposed to taking up place in your caption. Um, or they might not know who a person is. If you say, this is my friend Socks Whitmore, and you hadn't said that in the caption, that lets them know, oh, that's who that is. It's a handy visual processing option for everyday users of all abilities. How do we do visual descriptions? The main MO, object, action, context. This is a, so we could say, uh, Socks Whitmore, a white non-binary person with short brown hair, dancing on the beach, at my birthday party. You've described the object of the image, the main focus, the action that is happening, and context. I'm the object, the action is dancing, the context is beach birthday party. So when you are doing visual descriptions, you wanna be most comprehensive about describing people, their facial expressions, their gender, if you know it, don't assume just because someone presents masculinely, femininely, or androgynously that that directly correlates to their gender identity. You can also describe race or skin tone, disability, age, anything that helps your user understand what is happening in the image, getting the information. You can use proper nouns or names for well-known places and people. If I have a picture of Brad Pitt on my social media, I don't need to explain what Brad Pitt looks like or who he is. It's usually pretty straightforward. You can also describe content as, uh, you can describe your content as well as the aesthetics and style, as long as you keep that language plain and objective. Don't try to project your opinions by saying, this is beautiful, it is ugly, just keep it about the facts, because that's what your audience can't access without the help of this description. Focus on the important details without redundancy. That's the main rule of thumb. Flatten copy, for instance, is when text has been put in an image. That text cannot be accessed by a screen reader because it's inside the image and not somewhere where they can read it. So that's why image descriptions can be helpful if you're reiterating what's what was written in the flattened copy in the image that the screen reader isn't able to access. But if you end up with something like a lengthy verbal statement, for instance, some people like to do apology screenshots where they put something in their notes and they make they write a long apology for something that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense necessarily to copy and paste that into an image description, even though that's the only way that it would be accessible otherwise. Or you could have something like the White House. 
uh, where they release their formal press statements. So you can try using a video to convey this information instead of the lengthy verbal statements via image, or you can do what the White House does, which is to put a brief version of it in, in, vision, in visual form, just like a, like, a, like a quote or a shorthand version for what they're about to say, and then link out to the full thing on another web page like the White House website. Things to avoid in visual descriptions, site-related words. It's just being sensitive. It's not really fair to say you can see this person in the background if the person using your content, accessing your content, literally cannot see. Uh, you should also try and avoid image of. It's just redundant. If you're describing an image, it's definitely an image of something. You can get into a bit of a discuss. This gets into opinion territory when people say, should you use photo of, illustration of? I use it depending if I am trying to distinguish like whether the image I'm displaying is a live action image or whether it is a 2D drawing or a, a 3D screenshot from Frozen. So I use photo, uh, photo of an illustration of and screenshot of selectively when it's important for context reasons. Some audiences may say that you shouldn't use those because it's redundant. That's a that is user discretion. Abbreviation should be avoided unless they can be pronounced correctly by a screen reader. Screen readers do their best to pronounce words uh, by taking the letters and the sequence that they are and trying to turn it into a word. So NASA will work because a screen, a screen reader can pronounce the word NASA. But if you put JPEG the way that I've spelled it here, JPG, a screen reader might not know what to do with that because that's not really a pronounceable word the way that it's spelled. Um, if you are looking for something like FBI or BBC, those are initialisms because each letter of that acronym is pronounceable, then you can use dashes, spaces, or periods in between each letter so that the screen reader will know to pronounce each word separately. F-B-I. Now the screen reader knows that those letters are separated instead of one word. Avoid emojis, other symbols, hashtags, links, all of this kind of leads into unnecessary information that doesn't really help your user understand what it is you're conveying. It, if it doesn't directly benefit them understanding the information of the visual, it's usually best to skip it. Also in unnecessary information, random keywords, don't do that just to boost your SEO, it's not fair to the people who need your image descriptions and alt text. Uh, don't include photo credits, promotional information, calls to action. Those all go in your main caption. Secret messages that I'm not sure who's playing mind games with image descriptions, but you don't need to put secret messages in your captions. And hidden jokes. It's really just about getting the information across. Don't describe everything. Just focus on accuracy and understanding so that your users can know what you're putting out. Some other visual description tips, because there are so many. Uh, hashtags like hashtag accessibility or hashtag photo description right before your image descriptions will signal to disabled users that you are an accessible account. This is a completely optional tip. I don't use it personally um, for reasons of my own, but it is a way that you can choose to make your account accessible. You realize that some people surf through social media platforms via hashtag. So there's a very real chance that a user is using the hashtag accessibility hashtag to find content that they can access. That actually boosts your signal by you getting on that hashtag and letting people know that they can find you there. Video descriptions don't need to be a transcription. Closed captions are the best for audio coverage. You don't want to junk up your captions like your in, your post captions with with too much information if you can avoid it. So if your video is is long, you don't need to like try and, and write out every word in your caption. Use your closed captions or your transcripts to convey the audio side of it. Just focus on using your video description for the visual side. Keep your alt text short and sweet. Image description is where you put all the long lengthy stuff. Alt text should be punctual. One, 125 to 140 characters max is usually a good ballpark. Don't repeat any accessible text unless you are elaborating. It takes time for screen readers to get through information and repetition just like bogs that down. Only repeat if you are then expounding and adding information via elaboration. Alt text will only be read by a screen reader in the language that you write it. So if you're writing in English, your screen reader cannot translate, 
but Instagram post captions can be translated into other languages. So your image description, if that's in your in your caption, can be translated. Your alt text cannot. That's just something good for you to be aware of. And as we were kind of saying before, any effort is better than none. Even if you don't have the capacity or skill to go full dive, describe everything, any effort you can give to put alt text or image descriptions matters. So now here are some examples. This, for instance, is a post where I was like, I don't have time. I just need to get this out. It's a holiday. It's getting late. I just want to make sure I post today. So my image description is very short and to the point. A black and white photo of Socks Whitmore, the camera aimed up at them as they stand before a microphone. I churned this post out and this is pretty, this is what a really healthy post looks like by my accessibility standards. My caption is fairly short. It doesn't, it's not emoji heavy. I've got my photo credit, I've got my image description, and I've got my hashtags all capitalized properly so that they're easy to read. I use the three dots. I've gotten into the habit of using the three dots to separate for sighted users who want to distinguish between the heart of my content and then the accessibility and logistics of my content. I also think it looks a little nicer if you if you are a sighted user. But that is not by any means like an industry stand industry standard uh, accessibility standard that is me making a personal choice. Here are some more examples, uh, this is a version without the three dots it says image descriptions slide one slide two. Here's another one, this is from my early days when I was getting used to doing image descriptions I put each one in brackets I did bracket image description one and then bracket image description two. Here is a video description example. I had two videos in this post, so I just gave some context, truly. The first one was, I said, my vocalist, Lydia Sullivan Pugh, and pianist Abe Ross rehearsed my piece on the steps of the FCCLA sanctuary. So that gave enough context that someone listening to the sound of Lydia performing would know what was happening and not just be hearing music out of context. And the same thing went for the second slide. I had a visual that was just a close-up shot of the sheet music I was reading off of, and you could listen to the sounds of choral singing in the background. Pretty short and to the point, but it gives enough context that both sighted and non-sighted users would benefit from knowing a little more information about these posts. Here's an example of when I have so many pictures and so much to say in the heart of my caption that I actually have to put my image description in the comments. For some platforms such as Instagram or Twitter, there are character limits and you run out of room to put your image descriptions. So I put them down here in the comments. Unfortunately, the reality of this practice is that you cannot pin your own comments to your posts. So if people start commenting a lot, your comment gets pushed down. The best way to counter this is this is a this is a tactic really best fit for organizations and businesses is to have a second account for your image descriptions. So if your business name was Socks Whitmore, then your business account for image descriptions could be Socks Whitmore IDs. And every time that you post and need to put image descriptions in the captions, you can use your image description account to comment on that post with the image descriptions and then pin that comment. I've seen this, I've seen this in practice uh, on other accounts on the internet. So that's just a tip you can use if you're feeling really serious about accessibility. And this is just uh, another example I wanted to note. Again, as I said, I run the transgender talent social media accounts and I actually got a request from this client when I was giving him a signal boost on our socials. He had a very specific way he wanted the image descriptions where he said he wanted them to kind of have a fun tone to them. So he gave me, he gave me the image descriptions and I used the ones he sent me out of respect for him. This gets a little bit tricky because that like last sentence in the first ID where he says, hey, at least he remembered to mask up, right? Is It's towing the line of the hidden jokes thing we talked about. That's not really helpful to um, users who are accessing these image descriptions. But the reason I wanted to show you this is because if you're worried that your brand right now doesn't really suit image descriptions or you're like, oh, that feels like it's not within my brand, you can actually write your image descriptions with a tone. You can contain your brand voice within your image descriptions and still convey the very important information you need to convey. So don't be afraid of image descriptions just because you think they're not your brand. This is on to alt text. This is an example of how it looks on Facebook. So this is a pretend post I made for the purpose of this presentation, though this is a real gig. 
Uh, here you can see my image description and over here you can see my alt text. If you want to add alt text to your photos on Facebook, you just go to this edit button when you are forming your post and then you will have the option to do all of these things, including alt text down here. Facebook does generate alt, alt text for you automatically. It doesn't always do a good job because you can see here that it said maybe a cartoon. That uh, that doesn't do a non-sighted user a whole lot when their screen reader is trying to figure out what this image is. So I usually try to do my alt text by hand. You can also see the distinction between how one approaches an image description versus alt text. So over here, the image description is a little longer. A 2D illustration of an androgynous blonde child who is dressed in yellow and glowing. Sparkles adorn them as well as the decorated Christmas tree behind them. Two sentences, but it covers the colors, the main objects. You get a clear sense of what's happening in here. Then in my alt text, I say illustration of the child of light. Because in my main caption, I let you know that this is the child of light. There's context there that informs that. The alt text can rely on the fact that I've established who the child of light is. And so you can say it's an illustration of the child of light. Here is Instagram from the desktop point of view. So same caption as before. I just move down to the accessibility tab down here. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty easy to find. And it even tells you alt text describes your photos for people with visual impairments. Uh, the correct term is blind and low vision users, but that's a fight for another day. So that's where you find it on Instagram. And if you are posting from mobile, I believe that you just need to go to advanced or accessibility they've changed it recently um but you go to you open a new window on mobile from uh, you go to like a new tab it moves you to a different screen essentially and will allow you to do exactly the same thing it just looks a little different here's twitter so as you can see typing the caption i can't fit my image description in here it exceeds the character limit for twitter I have a few options. I could reply to this tweet and create a thread where my image description is contained in, this, in the secondary tweets in the thread. Or a lot of times what I will do is I will treat the alt text feature as the image description and just be comprehensive in alt text for Twitter because Twitter is so heavily about keeping things concise and fast moving. That's again a personal choice that I make. You should feel free to take reference from all sorts of people when deciding how you'd like to do image descriptions and alt text on Twitter. And the way that you do it on Twitter is you find your edit button and you go over to the middle tab where it says alt. And actually while you are on Twitter, it will note alt on the visual. This only helps sighted readers, of course, but when you, when you are a sighted person scrolling through Twitter, you can actually see which images have image descriptions or alt text on them because it will say alt on the image after you've added it. 